Now, the U.S. Fed is expected to hike rates further in the coming months, which we've been talking about for quite some time. But what can we expect across asset classes in uh, response? I mean, that R word is coming up again and again. Angus Coote from Jameson Coote Bonds is joining us now. Angus, welcome to the program. It's been a while since we've had a chance to speak. Much has changed. Uh, we were just having a chat with uh, Joseph Caperso from the Commonwealth Bank about where you know interest rates would likely sit here in Australia once the RBA st starts to hike. What do you think? Uh, thanks for ha very much for having me on. Um, yeah, great question. Look, I, I differ somewhat with what Joe was saying uh, with regards to Australia and the RBA potentially having a, a soft landing, engineering a soft landing. I think what's gone on in the RBA over the last few years has been nothing short of chaotic and they've lost trust of the market and in, in many sense they are very much behind the curve. We've clearly seen that throughout the commentary that they've been making over the last um, six months in particular but you know if you've taken out a mortgage late last year thinking that interest rates are going to be at 10 basis points until uh, 2024 then you must be looking back at uh, you know the last couple of weeks with some conjecture as to what has happened. Um, but you know, I, so I think that the RBA are behind the curve. The market is certainly looking at um, the uh, the RBA and looking with them some distrust. They say one thing and do another, and this has been widely written about in, in financial journals. But the market is extraordinarily priced in 2.6 percent RBA cash rate by the end of this year. That's nine rate hikes, 25 basis point rate hikes from where we are. So we've got seven meetings. I just don't see where how we can get to that point. I agree with Joe. I don't think we can get to to that level. We've got a terminal rate um, on the market at 3.5, 3 3.6% in the next year. Um, I think we would have a very, very uh, big problem on our hands if we had that. Again, you add um, you know, potential um, uh, you know, wage increases that Anthony Albanese is talking about, potential matching inflation at 5.1%. That would be a real problem for the city, for the RBA. Um, so I, I don't think we get there. I think the housing market will slow down. Clearly, we're seeing sentiment starting to slow down with that Westpac number coming through um, it's a lot softer, it will start to bite. I just don't think there's any chance we get that to that level. But I think we're, it, we're probably looking at a recession next year. And one thing that Joe didn't talk about, and he was best placed to talk about it, coming from the CBA, is that we've got a huge amount of fixed rate loans rolling off next year at, at sub 2% uh, sub into a much higher interest rate, prevailing interest rate on the floating side. So there's going to be a margin squeeze on the household sector and that will see confidence dip again. So we're 12 hours away or so from your CPI data. Obviously, we can't wait to see what it says. But you know, a few guests here over the last few days have said that you know, the data is going to show a bit of softening in, in inflation and that maybe it's time to start reallocating to, to, to bonds again or the, the, the sovereigns. What do you see? Is uh, a sure. yields attractive here? Is it time to, I suppose, buy the dip in bonds? That's a great question. Um, it's been a tough couple of years in the bond market, that's for sure. But one thing about the bond market is it's forward looking. And a lot of this move has been priced. As I said, I, I don't believe that we're going to get to 3.5% Aussie cash rate in one year's time. Are they going to be higher? Absolutely. But too much has been priced in. So um, I think that the, we're certainly seeing a lot of interest from our investors institutionally and retail-wise looking to add some duration back into their portfolios. Everyone's been underweight and that's been the, the, the correct trade. But the bond market's priced so much in now. And if we do go into recession, with these high yields, we're getting positive real yields in Australia and in the US, which we haven't seen for a long period of time. JCB as an investment manager is experiencing the highest yields we've had as a business in our 10 years in existence. Uh, and so you're probably, you're getting paid to hold the product, which is something we haven't seen for a long time. And if we do go into recession, bonds, government bonds in particular, do very well in recessionary periods. And that's why you see a lot of people talking about this two cents in curve inversion, people wanting to buy the back end of the bond market because they say, you're going to hike rates too far and then you're going to have to cut them and that's when bonds come to the fore. It's so interesting because we're now talking about recession more and more and I believe you think it's looking more likely in 2023 just going on everything we've talked about. Do you put any sort of a time frame on a potential recession? You know, we get a recession, the sure. Fed backs off, then what happens? So if you look at the two tens curve, it's been a great predictor of recessionary periods for the last 50 odd years in, in modern, modern um, markets. Um, every, every time we get a curve inversion of two tens, that two year going higher than the 10 year bond, we see a recession on average 16 months later. 
So that would put, you know, that in that um, mid-23, late-23. But the, the thing that is different this time is that, and one of the reasons I, I don't think the Fed are going to stop because the equity market's falling, it's a new paradigm, is that they're going to hike rates because they have to. They've got to get the inflation under control. They want, they want um, you know, equities and credit and other, other products lower because they want financial positions to tighten. And if they do go, I mean, we're, we're, we're market forecasting two uh, 50 basis point rate hikes from the Fed in the next two meetings. Uh, we're, talk we're talking about central bankers, talking about potential for 75 basis points again. There is a potential for a curve, for, for a, a policy error, and then they roll quicker. So it could be, it could be sooner than that, um, given how aggressive and how hawkish they are. They should have been raising rates a year ago. It was political that they weren't because Powell needed to go and get his renomination signed and sealed uh, in November. Uh, once he did that, he almost did a 180. He, had, uh, he was a dart, he became uh, quite hawkish thereafter, and now they're uber hawkish. And uh, there's every chance we get a policy error that, um, in, the, in the next little while. And as Joe said, they may be forced to cut rates into next year, and that's what, certainly what the market is forecast. What risk do you place on stagflation then? Because it would probably be a quite a different environment for bonds if we, we do see inflation remain high, say hypothetically because of these lockdowns in China or, or things of that nature, the supply shocks. Yeah, great question. Look, I, I think that's somewhat unlikely because if you look at the inflation pulse, a lot of it's been driven by, in particular in the US, uh, two components being oil and autos. And you are starting to see that tail off. Look at oil under $100 from being 130 uh, coming from all the way from zero. That impulse is, is, is coming down. And the thing about inflation, you need to keep it persistent, increasing at those levels for it to be, um, you know, to, to keep up at these high levels. Tonight's CPI number will be very, very important. Uh, market is, is looking for a, a slight dip. And, and uh, certainly all the research that we are reading is, is suggesting that inflation could be peaking here. If it wasn't for the war, we probably would have been peaking um, in April. Um, but that's obviously extrapolated the uh, inflation pulse somewhat further. I think that these interest rates are going to bite. And, and the, the thing about it is, is that they're trying to solve a supply side problem by crushing demand. They're going to hike rates to, to, to make sure that people, to make, to make uh, investing in, in or buying goods uh, less attractive because it's harder for people to have excess cash to do so. Um, and it's a very, very blunt tool. So that, that's why if you cause a recession, it will be very difficult for them to see inflation keep um, increasing at the rate that it has. So Angus, you know, equity investors yesterday were talking about, you know, blood in the streets, panic. You know all the headlines that get written when we see a sell-off like that, particularly what we saw in New York. Do you don't think that a, a more significant equity market sell-off this time around is enough to deter, uh, you know, the U.S. Fed for carrying on? Uh, you know, d is the Fed put done and dusted for now? I think the Fed put is done and dusted, absolutely. There's no question about that. Um, I've been in uh, my personally about four uh, cycles. I've seen when equity markets can cascade lower, and the difference this time is the Fed is not going to stop hiking rates because of equity markets slowing down. They need, to, they need to suck money out of the economy by forcing interest rates up. It's, it's classic economics 101. And, and the difference this time is we saw it in 2018 when uh, the Fed hiked rates and said we're a long way from neutral in October of, of 2018. They pivoted in January 19 and then started cutting interest rates. We, we saw that that's not gonna happen this time because it's all about inflation. We, didn't ha we haven't had this inflation pulse for a generation and they need to get it under control. They're behind the curve. And the collateral damage for that is going to be softer equity and softer risk prices in, in corporate credit and other risky assets. Look no further than Bitcoin and how that's been playing out over the last few days. Sadly for the risk community, they've had a fantastic ride over the last two years. Uh, it's, just, it's not right to have 30% up, up years every, year in, year out. And if we do go into recessionary periods, you probably want to balance your portfolio away from being too heavily uh, skewed to risk markets because it looks like there's some pretty significant storm clouds on the horizon. And I think that equity markets have got a, 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 a decent, decent way further to go.